All right, so we're back at it today. I have to get this engine out of this car. I gotta get the short block out of this car today uh, with no exceptions. Uh, if I wanna make Ray Abraham show this weekend, I've got no I've got no choice, so I'm just gonna kinda dive right in here. Y'all hang in there. Let's find out what's going on with this motor. <laughs> Say he's a nut job. <laughs> Alright, All right. so the first thing I want to do is get, if I can, I don't understand what's holding this on there. Okay, oh, I don't think we were having any issues. Somebody said they thought it might have been an exhaust leak, but there's no blowouts. On this exhaust gasket, it's no, this exhaust gasket's fine. Probably should have just left it on there, but we'll replace those anyway. So, trying to work around the headers on this thing, but I'm just I'm so committed to not trying to take these headers off. Uh, if you've ever had headers on a Ford Galaxy, especially a 63 or 64, you understand the uh nightmare uh of trying to get these headers uh on and off one of these cars and uh yeah you wouldn't want to take them off anymore you had to anyway the headers on these cars for those that don't know two pipes go down beside the motor like a traditional header two pipes wrap around the outside of the frame and rejoin them so they sandwich around the frame uh an absolute pain in the tail to get them on and off of the car um, obviously can be done it's just an absolute pain to do it so uh i'm gonna get the radiator out front accessory off there and uh motor mounts unbolted and then i'm gonna have to deal with the bell housing bolts and we're gonna try to pull the just pull the short block out not even gonna deal with the transmission or anything like now so that we can so we can get this thing pulled apart and stuck on the engine stand and see if we can figure out what happened uh all I know for now is I gotta get this radiator out and get this thing tore apart. Y'all need to listen faster. All right. Apparently my kid did not clean up her mess the other day because it's so much more than my mess. Anyway, uh, these little magnetic strips are freaking awesome. I try to lay all my if i can't put the bolt back in the hole it goes in i try to lay it with the part it came out of technical difficulties Apparently in this mess around here, I can't find my 12 point socket to fit this ARP fasteners that's on the front of this motor because, uh, I mean, I, I, I wonder why. Anyway, well, I had a good plan. See, I've got the short block all stripped down, ready to, you know, pluck her right out of there. I just gotta get the bell housing bolts off and um, currently the situation that I'm in is that the uh, belly to floor ratio uh, won't allow me to get under there to the bolts and um, I made a quick trip if you go back and watch the last video to ohio to pick up a car and i always carry my floor jack with me in case there's a problem with a tire on a trailer or anything like that 
um, instead of like a normal person who carries a bottle jack or something. Um, so it seems as though work is going to be suspended for a few hours uh, because, again, the math says the uh, belly to floor ratio under the car um, does not work in my in my favor. So that's that's the thing. Apparently, I had uh, unbolted a lot of stuff. Uh, and then realized that, well, I didn't turn the camera on. So really all you missed was me unhooking the starter and taking the water pump off and taking the bell hose bolts off. That's really all you missed. Um, and now we're going to get this engine hoisted up out of here. I'm going to get my good fancy lift, or uh, not lift, but my good fancy uh engine stand and well let's just see if we can figure out what uh what, what wrong yeah it looks like everything's clear my high pencil strength tester is not gonna get to test anything today Never been a guy that really liked the black motor, and uh, well, it's time for the black motor to go away. All right, let's dig in here. We gotta take the clutch and uh, all those goodies off so that we can clutch while we'll. Uh, I'll take the vacuum plate off. We'll take all that stuff off so that. Uh, Pressure plate looks pretty good. Clutch looks good and even. Doesn't look like there's any problem there. Well, it looks good. It looks like old. That, however, is a little concerning. There is, in fact, metal on a magnet. I guess I took for granted since I had let a little bit come out and didn't see any metal if there was no metal but I'm not taking for granted how strong this magnet is i can't even pull this metal off of it it's like digging into my hand trying to pull it off so uh yeah apparently which a good strong magnet it's a good thing i mean maybe it kept it from getting anywhere in the metal in the engine but there is definitely i got that one little piece off you can see it there is a piece of metal right there that's a pretty good chunk of metal right there but that is the only chunk I see on here. Oh, wait, no. Well, we got it upside down. Let's get the oil pan off and see what we're dealing with.
the hell is going on with my extension? For a Sasquatch, I could hold more bolts, but I'm out of hand room. That's a damn expensive oil pan, and I don't want to damage it for sure. I don't, I don't like that. Don't like that. Boom. A piece of metal and pickup screen. Uh, oops. Come on now. Let's see if I can. Which side's the camera on right there? Oops, it, there it is. A little piece of metal there. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Now I'm upside down, so I gotta think. Which side is my. Oh! So right here was where. In here was where I was hearing the noise. Uh, Okay, the metal wasn't coming from number three. That actually looks really good. Really good. Journal looks good. I, I'm at a loss. That's where the noise was coming from. Huh. Well, that ain't good. That's where I was hearing the noise. Huh. Um... Okay. Let's uh let's push this out. I I don't see any issues. I mean, you can see where some metal has went through the oiling system now and it needs to come apart. But this looks perfect. I don't see anything wrong with this not only is there a noise in this engine i'm seeing bits and pieces of metal um well let's see if it was number what's well, straight across from number three uh uh seven let's see if it was number seven and i was hearing it on three. <clears throat> there's obviously something because there's little pieces of metal on this tube pickup right here. So there, there's something in here that was eating itself. But I don't know what it is yet. Perfect. The bearing's perfect. I, I don't understand. Perfect.
Y'all heard this thing when I pulled it in, right? I wasn't dreaming this. Oh, I mean, there's metal on the oil pickup, so it's obvious something is hurt in this motor. I guess all I can do is just, I don't know. I, I could have swore the noise was coming from right there on number three. I don't know. Let's let's see if the noise was traveling a little bit. We'll jump back here to two. Here. Let's see if that is our huckleberry. I say it's obvious bearing material because it's got some gold color to it, so. Nope, perfect. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's actually not perfect. There's not a bearing on that. Oh, I think we got a spun bearing on. Yep. Let me see if I can lean you in here. Uh, if you look, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Let me see if I can, yeah. Look right here, you can see the lip of the bearing. It's about that far rotated. So now the question becomes, question becomes, kind of set the tripod back down. Question becomes, is my, Crank gonna be damaged there. Cause we did catch it fairly early. Can't get my hand in here to. I, I thought I was missing half a bearing cause the rod was down here and there's about this much of it rotated there. The other half of the bearing wasn't on it, but as I reached around, I can feel the end of the other bearing right there, right up, right there. So that bearing is slid under this bearing or that one over it, however you want to see it. So definitely a spun bearing on two, on number two, I mean. I'll look at the one that's adjacent from it, which is six to see if it's injured, but definitely a spun bearing on number two. Uh, I'm scared to see the crank. Boy, I'm scared to look at this crank right now. Hands off and see if I can carefully. Hmm, let me go ahead and pop this one loose and push it out. That way, maybe I can get under, under that. Luckily and thankfully, the rod looks perfect. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest. If that rod had been damaged, uh, I would have been cooked because. There's no way I could afford to replace these rods. It took me a long time to uh, ever be able to afford a set of rods like this to start with. I kind of feel the same way about the crank. I don't know that I can replace this crank. Uh, this is actually a Ford 428 crank. Uh, but I don't know if I can afford to uh, replace a 428 crank or not. Pretty much means I won't make it for Americana. Uh, this bearing doesn't look bad, but you can see right on the edge of it right there where that bearing had rubbed it. So it looks as though at this point, yeah, that bearing's fine on the rod. So it looks as though at this point, It's just confined to one cylinder. Of course, that bearing is definitely damaged. Good news, the crank right there still looks mirror perfect. Oh no, our crank is galled up right there. Definitely <clears throat> a spun bearing. Definitely spun a bearing. And uh, 
our crank is hurt. I can definitely feel it right there. I don't think that's going to polish out. And I'm pretty sure this crank was already turned 10. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we know. Now we know. And if you get in here and look, this side of the crank's fine, but it's hard to see in this light, but you can see some, what looks like little ridges running this way. And right here, you can feel a lip. So this is actually, how can I explain this? This is like, this is actually turned down to a smaller dimension than this. It's just because some material has been eaten off here. And that's where, I, can you hear that? That's where the, Metal was coming from a thing. Thankfully, our rods look good. Thankfully, our rods look good. Our head looks good. All the expensive parts look good. I say expensive parts. Price of 428 crank. Uh, we'll probably be down for a while with this motor because I don't know when I'll have the money to replace this crank. This is, was, a, was kind of a once in a lifetime build for me. Um, it was kind of one of those things where I really took a gamble and put myself out there to build a big horsepower FE. We, and I did, I built a bigger horsepower FE and uh, unfortunately a bearing failure. Um, I kind of don't want to say a whole lot about that right now, but I will say that is the second rod bearing failure I've had this year. And I ain't doing nothing different. Just look at these bearings. Though. This is the bearing that spun. Look at it. It actually, I mean, right there, you can see it got hot. And, but that's where they were overlapped, right there and right there. But look at the rest of the bearing. The bearing actually doesn't look just absolutely terrible. Well, now we know. Now we know it was a rod bearing failure on cylinder two. Cause I'm not, I mean, I'm not going, I'm not going to talk bad about anybody. I'm just going to say that this engine had a rod bearing on number two. I personally am actually thankful that for two things. One, uh, we decided not to try to make another pass Two, that none of the real expensive parts rods pistons these heads none of the real high dollar parts was hurt now again a 428 crank ain't gonna be cheap and uh this one might could be saved and be turned i don't know if another 10 would take it off and that would make it 20 uh then it may need to go more than that and i don't know if i can even find 30 bearings and even if i could I don't know that I'd want it in a race motor. Uh, I'm perfectly okay with a 10 and I've ran 20 and not had any problems, but 20 is about my limit on what I'm willing to run uh, on a bearing for a race motor. Now, I may try to have this thing turned and see if I can find some bearings and just put it in a street motor. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do right now because uh, what this does is probably mean I'm not going to be able to make Americana uh, because I don't know, first off, where I could find another 428 crank. And secondly, I don't know that uh, I could afford it if I could find it right now. <sighs> well, now we know what went wrong anyway. You know, it's one of those things where if you're going to beat on a, a motor and, you know, beat on it hard, things happen. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to look into some things and see what I can figure out. I'd say he's a nut job. <laughs>